and welcome to another Kidlet Chat. Today I have the lovely Jill Esbaum with me. Hey Jill, how are you? Hi Brooke, I'm well, how are you? Just fantastic. Thank you so much for doing this and for chatting with us. Happy to be here. I'm super excited. Well, you write so many things, nonfiction, picture books, you have this awesome graphic novel, early reader. What do you classify that as? Uh, graphic early reader is what they call it. Ooh, yeah. So you do all these. So talk to us about this. What kind of brain do you have? <laughs> how do you get creative? I love it. Um, I think it's, it's not how I started 25 years ago. But then I was very focused on trying to write picture books and they were being rejected roundly. Uh, but I think over time you just, you're more receptive to ideas that ping in and you catch more of them. And so whatever strikes me as interesting is what I want to write about. So I, I also don't like doing the same thing twice. Yeah, I see that. Uh, any kind of craft I've ever done, I've always resisted that. So, um, so I'm always more interested in design if I'm doing a craft than actually doing more than one. So writing is kind of the same way. I mean, if I had, a, when I have a series and they want more than one, of course, I'm going to jump up and down. But um, in general, I like to go from, from genre to genre or, you know, like if I write in rhyme once, then I'm not eager to do that again because it's hard. Yeah. So then I want yes. to a little more crazy fun or yeah. serious or historical, you know, it just depends. I love it. So what's been one of your favorite fun stories you've written recently, let's say, recently published. Recently, okay, or, okay, well, I have some that are published yet that were really fun. Um, I have two coming from Putnam, in 20, one in 23 and one in 24, that should be announced very soon. I don't know if I should say anything more, but I could give titles. They are what I would call humorous informational fiction. Oh. Uh, one is, uh, Stinkbird has a superpower, and then they asked for a second one. And so that one is parrotfish has a superpower. Nice. Are these real animals? Or are they, uh, they are real animals with odd um, superpowers. Yeah, I, I love it. Know. Actually, they were first called, the first one was called Stinkbird Has a Secret. And the editor liked the superpower idea instead of secret because she said then teachers can use it um, to get kids to talk about what their own superpower might be. So Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did you come up with such a cool idea? Did you just do a lot of research? Oh, yes. Um, I've done 25 nonfiction books for National Geographic Kids over the years. And oh, I think almost all or all of the books have had animals, either an animal chapter, if it's a, a longer expository kind of thing, or about one animal in one book. So that has just introduced me to a lot of animals I didn't know before. Yeah. Or, because, you know, I wasn't in that world. And um, some I just want to revisit. So that's where I got the stink bird and the parrotfish. So. Oh, well, I'm excited. I can't wait for those to be enough. You know. Yeah. I always love reading like nonfiction or informational fiction or things like that from people like in your critique group or things because I always learn. I never know these things. <laughs> Picture books are for learning. <laughs> books are hard. Yes. They are hard. And they're only like 400 words. I know. People yeah. that don't write picture books think it's it got to be the easiest thing to write. We all know that. Um, yeah. And in fact, it's the hardest. It really is. It really is. Uh, I just, <laughs> like, what would be your recommendation if someone were to tell you? Because I'm sure that this happens all the time. Like, oh, yeah, I always wanted to write a book. I'm going to do that. What would be like your first thing you would tell someone? That would be like, you should do that. Things happen. People contact me through my website and tell me that. And the first thing I do, actually, I spend way too much time on that kind of thing because I, I want to be as helpful as possible. So I tell them about SCBWI and I tell them about the purple crayon and I tell them about, you know, everything I can think of that yeah. where you can go when you know nothing and really uh, educate yourself. Yes. So that's what I yeah. usually do. And it's because, you have to. It's hard because who knows? I mean, you know, it's something that some people have a knack for and others really have to work at it. Um, I had to work at it because I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So uh, try yeah, you to are. educate yourself however you possibly can, you know, do things like this. Yeah, so, exactly. Watch these. But I mean, look at you, you're 50 books later and you're like a rock never, star. Never would have believed that. 
Yeah. Oh my God. Well, I would. I think you're so fun. Um, so let's shut about Thunder and Cluck, because that is not a picture book. It's not in your realm. You're not an illustrator. You don't. So how did that happen? Oh, Thunder and Cluck. Um, that also came because I did a dinosaur book for National Geographic. <laughs> so all of a sudden I was kind of dinosaur crazed. Um, that was a while ago. And I've, so I've done a number of books featuring dinosaurs since then. And yeah. you know, I just thought it would be fun to have two very um, diverse dinosaurs, one big and scary and one little and mouthy and um, too brave for his own good. And what might happen if you put them together? And yeah. I've got it. I wanted to do it in all dialogue mm -hmm. because I'm crazy. Um, I really like a challenge. I like a new challenge. Just like I don't like to do the same thing twice. I also like a challenge, which yes. is probably comes from working, doing a lot of work for hire. And when they call and say, can you, I just had something recently, not for National Geographic, but for somebody else. And they wanted me to write about something and they wanted it done in 10 days. And I said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> It didn't pay well, but it was it, a fun project and I just jumped on it because I like a challenge. Yeah. So um, anyway, so I, I had that all dialogue and I sent it to an editor I've worked with before who was looking for young stuff like that. And she had asked me to write something like Elephant and Piggy. So I wrote this Thunder and Cluck and she said, okay, it's too Elephant and Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, it wasn't for her, obviously. So um, I played with it some more and my agent was able to sell it. I, I don't even think at the time I knew she was sending it around as an early reader. Yeah. But then it happened to go to Simon & Schuster um, to the editors there and that are in charge of that. And they wanted to do it. And it was like, I can't say I can do a cartwheel, but I did in my mind. Yeah, I would. Oh my gosh. Like, and who would have thought? <laughs> It's oh, cool. And it turned out so cute because Miles Thompson, oh my gosh. Yeah. He can do anything. It's kind of fun to try to stump him. I can't stump him. He can do anything. So I love it. Well, let's chat about the dialogue part because that's a challenge to write in dialogue only and actually tell a story. Because right. I, I mean, you can read a story that's not a story that's just dialogue back and forth. So how did you conceptualize that as a story? Did you have to start with like the plot and then turn it to dialogue? Or how'd you do I think it? you should. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to see what would happen when this uh, one dinosaur wanted to eat the other one and the other one called his bluff and found out he was a softy. Yeah. Uh, and then it was, you know, what happens from there? Well, I just kept playing around. I, yeah. I often, I mean, for them, it's been fun to just dive in with a situation and then let them talk. Yeah. Oh, I love that because you get to know your characters and sometimes they right. surprise you. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you never know where things come from. I mean, some things come in and you go, I could not have thought of that. I'm not that funny. Right. But, you know. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, my gosh. Um, I was going to have a follow-up question to that, and then my brain's not working. <laughs> so, so let's chat about how you kind of mentioned it. You like a challenge. You're a little competitive like I am. I'm very competitive. We play well together at those wonderful retreat games. Um, so if you could pick a game that you wanted to play the most, what would it be? Well, since it's getting warmer here and I haven't done it for a long time, I think badminton. Really? You can, you can be really sweet and kind or you can be, you know, can depending you on who you're playing. over the net? Yeah. Just a little bit of a birdie. Just, you know. Yeah. Uh, you're alone on that one. I will not play that with you. <laughs> Well, I grew up playing in the yard. I mean, that's something we did all summer long. And um, so. I oh, like that, that was like a course I failed in PE. Like you can, I can't get it over the net. <laughs> like tennis, but easier because you have a little more time to get to the ball. So yeah, that's fair. It does move slower. Yeah. Yeah. If you're with somebody nice, you can go nice and slow. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay. So let's say you get to hang out with a fictional character and play badminton, because I'm not going to play with you. Would it be yours or someone else's? And who would it be and why? That's a tough question. Yeah. I happen to have a book here. <laughs> okay. I, I thought about that because there's a lot of characters and a lot of books that I would like to hang out with. And then I looked at mine and I thought, well, it would have to be this guy. 
this cute little dog, because um, in the story, his name is Big Al. Where'd my Joe go? But in real life, it's a real dog. And yeah. it's the, the illustrator has a friend who adopted this little dog from the shelter. And in real life, his name is Smoochie. How cute is that? I'm oh, trying to put Smoochie into a, a book now. But, um, but yeah, look, I mean, and he's a little lost dog. So you just want to hug him. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. Well, that sounds really fun. Well, is there anything else, any other little nuggets you would like people to take away with? Oh, boy. Well, since we're going to be talking about nonfiction, I should talk about that. Um, okay. Because I'm putting it together right now. I was at the library all morning. Um, yeah, so we're going to have 10 tips to yeah. writing effective nonfiction picture books. And I got a bunch of people's picture books to use because I don't like to use my own exclusively and because I only have one officially um you know historical nonfiction picture book but I have a lot of other nonfiction but um yeah so I, I feel like I don't know I think I think I've done enough at this point of different kinds of things that I can talk about just about anything you want yeah <laughs> I know that's why I'm excited <laughs> for the Q&A because it's like they literally get to hang out with you yeah. and ask all the questions and as well I, I it, especially when we haven't been able to get together for so yeah. long so I know um, I know I'm really glad yeah. well if they would like to learn more about you they should go to jillfbomb.com right yes and I need to update that so <laughs> yeah get, get all of your new books on there because Jill's I, book comes I, out next yeah. week they say coming soon and they're already out but yeah right exactly well that's what happens when you're so awesome and you have all these books coming out <laughs> but one's not my favorite thing yeah <laughs> your website that's fair you need to get an assistant. That's what we'll work on for 2022 right. for you. Right. So rich, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Author life. Oh, man. Well, this has been so fun. Thank you so much for hanging out and chatting with us. Well, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to next Tuesday. Me too.